Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about income and substitution effects of wage changes on labor supply. So we're going to start off with the idea that leisure is a good and it has a price and the price of leisure or its opportunity cost is the wage. Each hour spent not working, not working represents an hour of lost wages. If the price of leisure increases so if wages increase, the price of leisure increases, people will buy less leisure and work more hours. On the other hand, if the price of leisure decreases, and remember we're saying the wage is the price of leisure, people will buy more leisure. So if the price of leisure decreases, wages fall, people will buy more leisure and work less hours. We can also think of leisure as a normal good. If income increases, people will buy more normal goods. So if leisure is a normal good, people will demand more leisure and that means they'll work fewer hours. If income decreases and leisure is a normal good, people will demand less leisure, which means they'll work more hours. Let's now look at the substitution effect and income effect from an increase in wages starting with the substitution effect. So if wages go up, the price of leisure increases. Leisure becomes more expensive. Its price increased. So people buy less leisure, substituting work for leisure. This means hours of work will increase. That is the substitution effect of a wage increase. There is an income effect. If wages go up, an increase in wages causes income to rise and people demand more leisure and that means hours of work decrease. The overall effect of an increase in wages on labor supply is ambiguous. It's unclear. Could go up, could go down, or could stay the same in terms of hours of work. The substitution effect and income effect are moving in the opposite directions. If the substitution effect dominates, hours of work increase from an increase in wages, and the labor supply curve slopes upwards. So if the substitution effect is bigger than the income effect, the labor supply curve will slope upwards. People will work more hours following an increase in wages. If the income effect dominates, if the income effect is bigger than the substitution work, if the income effect is bigger than the substitution effect, hours of work fall from an increase in wages and the labor supply curve slopes downwards. Some might call it a backward bending labor supply curve. If the substitution effect exactly offsets the income effect, hours of work remain unchanged. The labor supply curve then would be vertical. Let's now go through uh, a, an example here where we have a decrease in wages. So with a decrease in wages, leisure becomes less expensive, its price decreased, so people buy more leisure, substituting leisure for work, so hours of work will decrease. With the income effect, a decrease in wages causes income to fall and people will buy less leisure, they'll demand less leisure, so hours of work increase. If you're taking less leisure, you're working more. The overall effect of a decrease in wages on labor supply once again is unclear, it's ambiguous. The substitution effect and income effect are moving in opposite directions. If the substitution effect dominates, hours of work decrease from a decrease in wages and the labor supply curve slopes upwards. So if the substitution effect dominates, the labor supply curve will always slope upwards. If the income effect dominates, hours of work increase from a wage decrease and the labor supply curve slopes downwards. So if the income effect always dominates, we will get a backward bending labor supply curve, a negatively sloped labor supply curve. And then finally, if the substitution effect exactly offsets the income effect, hours of work remain unchanged and the labor supply curve is vertical. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.